Grasslands may at first glance seem a very simple environment. There's been a large, generally flat area covered with grass. However, there's much more to them than that. Firstly, they're present nearly all over the world, from the Russian steppes to the African savannah, to the prairies in North America, to the pampas in South America. And whilst these areas are slightly different, they do have many elements in common. Firstly, grassland isn't all grass. It can even have trees in it. However, those trees that are present are scattered, so they don't actually provide an unbroken canopy. I mean, most of the sunlight makes it down to the ground. Now, on the ground, along with the various different types of grass growing there, are often things like sedges, herbs, small shrubs and bushes. The key element, though, that separates the grasslands either from the forests or the deserts is the amount of rain the area gets. The rain is greater than that in the desert, but not enough to sustain a forest. Normally it has an extended dry spell, which many trees are unable to cope with. During this extended dry spell, the area is vulnerable to fires, which, because the ground is covered in dry vegetable matter, spread very quickly. A factor which is generally exacerbated by the flat terrain and lack of trees, and its strong winds often blow across the grasslands in the dry seasons. These frequent fires, which can be started either by human activity or by lightning, result in the clearing away of nearly all the plants in a large area, and another reason why slow-growing trees find it difficult to colonise the area. The dense, fibrous nature of the grass roots, which are fairly close to the surface, and are able to cope with extended dry spells, they can make the best use of occasional light rain showers, where the water doesn't penetrate that deeply into the soil. Also, the way the grasses grow in the cope with being grazed by a wide variety of herbivores that live in the grasslands and recover quickly in a way that other plants can't. The animals that live in the grassland are a diverse range of rodents, snakes, moles, rabbits, birds, deer and larger mammals including the world's largest herbivores and carnivores. However, what is probably less well known, mainly as a result of the large amounts of decaying plant matter both on the surface and in the soil, the vast array of invertebrates that are in the grassland. In fact, there are far more species of invertebrates than anything else. These vary from dung beetles to scorpions, dragonflies, grasshoppers, termites, millipedes and especially earthworms. Without these creatures, the ecosystem couldn't function. Yet because they live in environments with larger, more easily recognisable animals, some of these are the least studied animals on our planet. Due to the fact there are few trees growing in the grassland, the main factor holding the soil in place are the roots of the grasses. And when most native herbivores graze the area, they crop the top of the grass and then move on, leaving the roots intact, enabling the grass to recover quickly. However, with some domesticated farm animals and farming methods, they can eat the grass and then destroy the root system, meaning that in an extended dry spell, when the winds blow across the land, there may be nothing to hold the soil in place, creating vast dust storms, stripping away the topsoil and possibly damaging the ecosystem. So you have grasslands, not just an area of grass.